what are the best camera settings for sunset photos? We're going to look into that in this video, so don't go away. Hi, I'm Barry Callister of Photographer's Freedom, taking you from beginner to better to business. At photographersfreedom.com and right here on my YouTube channel, you will find photography tutorials, camera gear reviews, photography business tips, and so much more, all designed to help you no matter where you are in your photography journey. Subscribe if you like the sound of that and ding that notification bell so that you get notified whenever I release a new video. If you watch all the way to the end of this video, I'm going to tell you about a great course that will teach you in depth how to photograph and edit awesome sunset photos as well as night sky photos. Stick around for that. What are the best camera settings for sunset photos? Well, that's kind of like asking how long is a piece of string and I'll tell you why. The best camera settings for a sunset photo are those that get you the best result under the conditions you're shooting in using the camera and lens combination that you are using at the time. They're going to change from photo to photo. There are some standard settings that you want to use every time you take a sunset or a sunrise photo. Let's jump into the computer and take a look at some sunset photos that I've taken over the years. You will notice some common settings popping up in each photo. So here in Lightroom I have six images open that I've taken as you can see here from 2017 through to 2019. And each of these shots was taken at different parts of Australia. These first two were taken at Kilcunda Beach in Victoria, so that's in the southern part of Australia. And the other four were taken on the east coast of New South Wales here in Sandy Beach. So. The first thing I want you to notice is the position of the sun in each of these photos. In these first two, the sun is still above the horizon. You can clearly see it in this one with these nice sun rays coming out here. In this second photo, the sun is probably about here somewhere behind these clouds, casting these nice sun rays down onto the ocean there. And in this one, this is facing northwards. So east is sort of out to the right here. That's kind of north going that way. And the sun is over here to the west casting light onto these clouds as you can see this beautiful orange light there this one here is facing sort of to the southwest the sun is over here somewhere probably over about there somewhere and this one here with my daughter standing there this one is taken more towards the east you can see the sun is over behind her somewhere here casting light onto this cloud here and similar with this one here, the sun is over to the left of frame and casting this beautiful orange light onto these nice wispy clouds there. So let's have a look at the settings for each of these photos. So keep your eyes on this part of the Lightroom screen here. So with this one, it was taken at a shutter speed of 1 13th of a second at F11 aperture and ISO of 100. I'm using my 18 to 55 millimeter lens here. I think for most of these I was using that lens. That's the 18 to 55 as well. I oh know this is the Tamron 10 to 24 millimeter. Same there, same there, and same there. So two different lenses, same camera, both Nikon D5200. So the settings on this one again, 1 13th of a second, F11, ISO 100. If we look at the next photo, this one's taken at F8, so around the same area as F11. ISO 100, 1, 1, uh, 1 250th of a second shutter speed at the widest focal length there as well. Now, the next one, 1 25th of a second F8, ISO 100. The next one, 1 20th F8, ISO 100. Are you starting to notice a common thread here at all? See, the aperture and the ISO are pretty much the same in each of these images. Now, obviously the shutter speeds are different. The shutter speed needs to be set to whatever will give you the best exposure. But generally, 
your aperture wants to be set somewhere between f8 and f11. Now this applies not to every circumstance, first of all, but this applies to landscape photos at any time during the day, at sunset, sunrise, f8 to f11 in most cases will give you the best amount of depth of field, meaning that everything from the foreground to the background will be nicely in focus. Your ISO is real easy for sunset photos. You just need to have it as low as possible. So ISO 100 is the lowest I can have on the Nikon D5200, so that's what I set it at. And then your shutter speed is just whatever gives you the nicest exposure or the look that you're after. So you can see that common thread running through there. The aperture is around the same area, somewhere in the middle of the range. So you don't want to take a landscape photo at f2.8 or f4 or f5.6. You want, and you don't want to take it at f22, f28, f32, whatever you've got on your lens, because those are not the sharpest areas of your lens. For landscape photography, you want to use apertures in the middle of the range around f8 to f11, f14, to make sure that you get a more sharper photo and you'll get everything nicely in focus and it'll look great. Now we're not at the end of the video yet, but I did promise if you hung around to the end of the video, I would tell you about a course that can teach you in depth how to take awesome sunset sunrise photos, just landscape photos in general. Uh, a lot of what I've talked to you about in this video, I learned from this course and it's just amazing. It's called The Art of Photography by a photographer by the name of Jimmy McIntyre. And it's, it's an incredible course. You will learn to shoot and process landscapes, panoramas, long exposures, seascapes, interiors, the Milky Way, and also learn advanced exposure blending, as you can see here. And it really is great. We'll just watch this little promo vid a little bit here. So like I said, this is where I learned a lot of this stuff. Um, Jimmy's a great teacher, easy to understand. A lot of the stuff that's explained in this course is fairly advanced, but um, you know, I mean, look at the guy's photos. It's, they're just incredible. <laughs> So he teaches you how to process interiors as well. So if you're doing uh, real estate photography, that's a really awesome thing. How to do cityscapes as well. He takes amazing cityscapes. Beautiful, beautiful landscapes. He's been to some really amazing spots. And that's the man himself, Jimmy McIntyre. So, uh, you know, at the moment, there is a 25% discount on this course uh, via the link in the video description below. So if you want to check it out, check it out. You won't be sorry. Jimmy also has um, some plugins for um, his Raya Pro plugin for Photoshop. And it's also an amazing piece of software as well. So you can check that out if you want to via the link in the video description. Now you know what the best camera settings for sunset photos are. Remember, it is dependent upon the lighting conditions that you have, the type of camera and lens that you are using, and the look of the photo that you're after. But if you keep your aperture around f8 to f11, somewhere in that range in most cases, and keep your ISO as low as possible, that's a good start. Until next time, I'm Barry Callister of Photographer's Freedom. Get out there, take some wicked shots, and I'll see you soon. Oh,